Hey everybody, welcome to the Weekly Forecast. It's so good to see you. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh, and today we're going to be focusing, as always, on a couple of things. We'll be looking at a seven-day forecast together. We also have an, a fantastic special topic, which is healing and revealing the karmic lesson that's currently at play in your life. And for some of you, this may come through in relationships. Some it may be work, and some you might just be working on just internal growth. So wherever that comes through, we'll be taking special care and a special focus on that um, in the latter part of today's reading. If you're brand new, let me quickly show you what we cover in a forecast. We start off with channeled messages, and basically that comes from dreams, meditations, and also just me connecting to source before I begin. Uh, today we'll be talking about uh, your totem, which is a dandelion, and there's some amazing energies around strength and health that come through with that. So that's the first item. Then I'll pull seven cards that will take us from this Sunday to next Sunday. And then we have a, uh, an elemental breakdown, so we'll check in on all the signs, and then we'll get into that special topic. And there's a few other twists and turns as we go through this, but I'll highlight that as we get closer to it. Um, before we get into any of the forecasts today, just a quick reminder, if you like what you see here and are enjoying this presentation, please click the subscribe button, uh, the bell, opt into all notifications, and put a comment below as well. Not only does that help engagement, it also lets me know what you enjoy. I'd also love to see you across social media. So if you want additional reminders outside of Google and YouTube, please join me on the social media platforms listed below. Usually it's always my full name, Nicholas Ashbaugh, no spaces, no extra characters. Uh, Twitter's the only exception. Remember when you do follow me that I don't offer private readings and I don't use direct messages. This is a good way to be able to interpret the real Nicholas Ashbaugh from some of the imposters out there. If you would like to show some support, by the way, you can do that in real time through Super Stickers, Super Chat, and memberships. You can also gift memberships. And on replay, you can use the Super Thanks. All right, let's go ahead now and move along to both the channel messages and the totem, and we'll see what that reveals. All right, as I said, your totem today is the dandelion. And this is one of my favorite totems because it represents so many things from health to strength to the ability to overcome obstacles. And uh, I'll talk about how it came to me in just a second, but let's first geek out a little bit on the meaning of the word dandelion and, uh, and then we'll relate that to why it's coming through for you. So when I looked up dandelion, it basically comes from a French origin, dent de lion, a uh, tooth of the lion, and we just sort of mushed it together and made it an English word over time. And Part of this was because all of the flower petals kind of look like teeth or jagged teeth. And so because it was golden like a lion, therefore it was named that. <laughs> of course, this is going to connect us with the strength card most clearly in tarot. And that's an encouragement for you to focus on mental and physical strength. The totem itself, if you were to look at the dandelion, not, not necessarily the card here, it's completely edible. Um, the flower, the greens, and the root, they're used for tea, for salads, and for various sort of medicinal purposes. And you combine that with the strength card, it's basically saying mind, body, spirit, diet, exercise, all parts of your life are basically being uh, encouraged, you're being encouraged, I should say, in this moment to take care and to do something positive so that your physical channel, your body, can receive as much from spirit as possible. So prioritize your health. Say no to things that are taxing you out. Say yes to things that give you a sense of um, inspiration and happiness and grounding energy. This is also a card of being able to stand up to difficult energies and succeed. The strength card is about overcoming something that previously would dominate you. So the strength card, we see a uh, divine feminine energy and we see like the king of the jungle there. And it's about the ability to find balance and know that even if there's someone that normally would have power or would try to take away your power, you can step in and say, not today, not again. And it's basically about reclamation and balancing of power. And I like modern interpretations better where we see the two looking eye to eye and there's not necessarily that need to kind of put your hand in the mouth of the beast but there is something to be said for this original card because it carries with it a warning for that which we'll get into in just a moment uh, i think the other thing here to focus on is deciding what it is in your life that makes you feel powerful that makes you feel strong and put your energy behind that because there's always a decision how much 
how much investment am I putting in of time and energy? And am I getting something back or is it depleting me? Okay. You have the capacity, like I said, to stand up to something, but this tug of war might be something that you want to look at. So if there's a friend in your life or a parent or a teacher, someone whom you, you work a lot with and you respect, but there's constantly this, this uh, power struggle, there is a question, again, with this, when you're looking at the relationships, is it worth it? And should you have to constantly prove yourself? There's an investment question here, and that's one that only you can answer. Um, you, can, you can succeed no matter what you put your energy into this week, but there may be something better than what you're doing. You, you shouldn't have to prove yourself all the time. You shouldn't have to put the lion's share of the work in a relationship or a job. And so feel free to take a step back and reevaluate and ask yourself, what do I want to do next? Okay. Use your own voice. This is why I kind of do like the Rider Waite Smith card, because if you take away the imagery that we see here, you lose this piece, which is really powerful. So we see her putting her hands in the mouth and uh, of this lion. And sometimes what I think about with this, it's almost like a ventriloquist or a marionette or basically a puppet where someone's trying to make the mouth move. And so I would say for you, always use your own words. If somebody tries to make you say or do something you don't want to do, and basically you're the lion and they're the, the queen trying to make something happen, no, you stand up for yourself. Um, basically, this is a, t a time for authenticity and truth of voice because if you have to force it um, or if you're forced to do something, eventually that ends up creating more tension. So say no if somebody tries to make you do or say something that's wrong and realize that it's not fun to have someone tell you what to do, so don't tell someone else what to do. And this is really about realizing that you don't need to have that binary right versus wrong or that tug of war that we see here. It's about independence and, um, and, that, and equality, okay? So I put at the top, courage, strength, and voice. Have the courage to stand up for what matters. Focus on having the physical and mental strength to sustain and keep the voice authentic. And if you do that, you're going to sail through this week. When you see anything challenged, remember what we talked about today and stay true to, to your source, to the course, and to whatever it is that you're trying to do. Okay? Ultimately, this also tells me that you could rebound and see an improvement with uh, your health as well. Again, as long as you prioritize that. So the next message that I wanted to focus on with this totem is surrounding communication back into that sort of lion's mouth and the teeth of the lion. This really reminded me of the Ten of Swords here and the importance and the power of words. So on the positive side, this is a reminder that your words when used properly are a source of inspiration, elevation, and healing. However, if misused, words can also go through and cut away or chip away at confidence. They can hurt. They can be weaponized. So we want to avoid that energy and instead elevate. The other thing that I see with the Ten of Swords is the ability for you to let go of something. So just yesterday, I pulled like Three of Swords reverse for the daily card. And this has a very similar energy of release. Let's think about what Ten of Swords could represent and how you could let it go. Usually, it's criticism. It can also be actions done. And what happens sometimes is we internalize it way more than we need to. After all, we can't really control other people's thoughts or their actions. And so if they misbehave, act up, or just spout out words that are hurtful, that's their energy and that's their projection. We can decide what, how much we're going to internalize. So at some point, you can just look at that and think it's kind of like if there's static on the radio or if the, there's a really loud commercial on television or something that's distracting you in everyday life. You tend to tune it out. You, you turn on another channel, you turn it off, you shift your focus. And so if someone is spewing out the Ten of Swords, you're going to go in a different direction and just decide, I don't need that. That's negative. It's not constructive. It's destructive. If there's construction, <laughs> construction, if there's constructive criticism, it's something that's good. It builds up. If it's just critique that doesn't have any sort of source of inspiration or support or, again, um, something of value it's then just going to be there to tear you down so learn where to tune it out learn learn where to tune it in and that's going to help you um, quite a bit here take care of your body this is also building off what we just talked about the ten of swords can be a burnout card by the way i didn't even um, connect the two until i'm looking at this right now but 
One thing that I would say is if you're burning the candle at both ends, the previous card is just saying, really take care of yourself. Because what happens sometimes is the more ex uh, sort of exhausted you are, the more likely you are to maybe miscommunicate or misfire. So the way you can actually avoid this is by taking better care of your body. If you need to say something, really meditate on it, um, sleep on it, get a rough draft written, go back and rewrite it and make sure that what you say is the elevated version, not the first draft. Words can't be unsaid, basically, so choose wisely. Peace and forgiveness equal freedom of the heart and the mind. And one thing that you can just choose is to not invest time and energy. It's sometimes hard to forgive, but we can choose to not engage. That's the first step. And choose to sort of free or liberate yourself from something that creates the energy that we see in this card. And then later, the, the forgiveness comes through. Um, sometimes we just have to forgive ourselves for allowing it to happen. Sometimes we choose to forgive someone else, but that's your choice. The first thing is to step away from the things in your life that can create the Ten of Swords. And the first is fatigue. And that's why the Strength card came through uh, initially. The, the second one is just not letting this fire without this and this connecting. Think it through, feel it through, and then engage the throat. <laughs> These two are going to have to be the sort of filters for the throat chakra. Okay, and that's it. This is something that you can absolutely navigate around. And we'll take a look in, again when we look at the seven day forecast to see if there's any indicators of where the Ten of Swords might pop up. Now into the more enjoyable and fun aspects of this. So one of the things that I was meditating on this morning that came to me rather when I was meditating was the old uh, child story, uh, Charlotte's Web by E.B. White. And the spiders at the end, the little baby spiders from Charlotte, they take off and they have the, they, they spin these little balloons and go flying, all except a few which stick around with Wilbur. Um, so I liked that and it reminded me a lot of the energy of the dandelion. So the two were connected to me. Um, but primarily I wanted to focus on the dandelion, but the spiders came through as well. So what, what kind of connects the two of them? Well, with the with the seed pod or the seed head of a, of a dandelion, which it's this beautiful transformation, right? It goes from that yellow to this perfectly spherical seed head with all these sort of propellers, right? And as a kid, we're taught, you know, make a wish and you, you blow the, the dandelion seeds out into the wind and watch as they fly away. Same thing at the end of E.B. White's story, the, you know, the little spiders fly away and they take root, they, they, they set up a new home somewhere. So there could also even be like a flying ace of pentacles here as well. But this connects me very much or to the energies of two tarot cards, the two of wands and the magician. The two of wands is looking out and thinking, what is it that I want? That's the wish. That's the dream. The magician is you channeling it and working it. High priestess energy also applies here, but I was really focused on the color of the magician card with respect to strength and like the dandelion energy. And so I think this is about beginnings. So all you have to do today and this week is kind of like put a marker in the sand or say to the universe, I'm ready for this. Show me what's possible. And your guides, God, the universe, your angels, your higher self, they're just waiting for you right now to say it, to think it, to wish it. So I'm encouraging you today to make a wish, to set an intention, to dream a dream. And that last bullet is so important. Dream big. Have faith. Don't limit what's possible yet. Let the universe show you what's, what's possible and what isn't. We are taught from a young age from teachers and parents, like there's all these limits that are imposed on us. Oh, you can't do that because... And usually the because isn't true. It's a bias that they put out or it's a fear, or it's a projection. And there's so many that we're not going to get into that. So don't limit yourself by what parents, teachers and society say. Go into the heart space, go into the head, go higher and just kind of wish that wish and see where it takes you. All right. And that's what really brought me to the dandelion. It was those little flying spiders and um, Charlotte's Web. I need to reread the story. Uh, I remember that was like the first sad story that I read as a kid, but it was still very uh, hopeful because it carries with it the, the energy of transformation as well. Through death comes this sort of beautiful rebirth and, um, and even more than what was there before. So a kind of hidden card in all of this would be death and transformation. And what an appropriate one to come through here on the eve of Halloween. <laughs> so and I'm, I mean, I'm wearing um, orange in celebration of that. Again, I'll be wearing a different shirt for my Halloween special tomorrow. So tune in for that. Okay, 
Try again and again, dandelions are survivors. And this is so true. Anybody that has a garden knows what I'm talking about. And, and if you live in the part of the world, I think they grow on most continents. When I was looking, it was at least six continents, not every one, but most. Um, so this is a <laughs> very adaptable flower and um, one that's very hard to kill. Part of that is because it has a very deep tap root. And so unless you go in and dig out the root, it's going to come back. And even if you leave part of the root in there, it's usually going to grow again from there. And of course, the, the seed pods that just go out in the wind and, and spread everywhere, they find new places they weren't, uh, you know, even before. I think this is an amazing trait. I like resilience. And so not only can we connect it to the energy of the strength card, but now also the nine of wands. And we see the bandage on this person, which means they've they've experienced some setbacks, but they're not willing to let go. So you're very close to completing or accomplishing something. This week, don't let an initial setback or pushback or fear or doubt keep you from going down that path. Come back. Come back with a new plan. Get a good night's rest. Try it again. Sometimes it takes a few attempts, and it's just like riding a bike for anybody that uh, has gone through that experience. Most of us have. I remember, you know, it, it was teamwork that helped me. Like, I couldn't do it on my own, and my parents tried, but, like, for some reason, it, I wasn't vibing with them. And it was, like, my uh, a neighbor friend that helped me. And I can't remember exactly. I think we started going down a hill, and that helped. And then also, um, she pushed me and said, now just move your feet, <laughs> and that helped. So um, it was it was cool. And then there's that moment of, oh, my God, I'm doing it, I'm writing. And then you fall. <laughs> so it took a few attempts and it took a nudge from a friend. And one thing that I remember the friend did for me was just said, it's easy. If I can do it, you can do it. Let's do this. Come on. And um, by having that sort of support and that nudge that helped out. So maybe you need that friend. Maybe you are that friend. But I see the nine of wands and you're going to take the training wheels off this week and you're going to fly or ride or move forward because the totem is showing you that it is resilient. And it also goes from a grounded state to an elevated state. What a cool totem, actually, too, because it's going to connect with almost everything. It is earth. It's also in the air and it's going to connect with water and also with fire because it needs sunlight. It photosynthesizes synthesizes that and also you need water to, to have this grow so it's connected to all four elements and so you're going to pull it together somehow this week okay don't worry how exactly just trust in the process and that is everything so again let's just review quickly and then we'll get into the seven day forecast tooth of the lion um, is what this means and it also connects us to the lion so strength is key but remember this is not a sort of you don't have to prove yourself to someone else. You can if you need to, but it shouldn't be something that has to be done again and again. One time, fine, but if you're constantly in that tug of war, then this is an indication to move on. Remember the authenticity of voice, which then plays a role here. Don't put words in your uh, don't let others put words in your mouth and don't force them in others either. You can't force people to do something. You shouldn't be forced to do something. This is a chance to heal and release. We're going to be looking at karmic messages in just a little bit. So I have a feeling that this Ten of Swords will reveal itself. Um, so it's a time to let go and it's a time to use your words and actions to heal. Make a wish. This is the really elevated piece of the totem, which is the universe is waiting. It's waiting to hear, I'm ready from you. So are you ready? And when you're ready, tell it what it what you're ready for. Tell your guides, your higher self, your angels, you know, I want to do this. How can I do this? And then meditate and receive. And then finally, just if just because it doesn't work the first time out of the gate, that doesn't mean that it won't work. Uh, part of the joy is eventually learning how to ride that bike or how to fly or how to make your way in the world. So you're going to be able to do it. OK, I have faith in you. And so do the angels, the guides and, and also the message here that we were looking at. OK, if you just joined, we got through the channel messages and now we're going to take a look at the seven day forecast. So this is going to take us from Sunday to Sunday. I'm going to turn the camera down and we're going to take a look at what's coming through. All right. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully uh, your weekend went pretty well and uh, very glad that you chose to spend some time today here to take a look at the energy of the next seven days. All right. This portion is for everyone, by the way. Uh, we will be looking at sign specific information in just a few minutes, but this is for everyone present, as will the special topic be as well. All right. So Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. 
Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. All right, by the way, I'm using a, a deck that I haven't used in a while. Um, this is the Field Tarot, and all of these are available on my website. I get a lot of questions like, what deck are you using? Uh, Dakota and I can put a link out there for you. All right, let's take a look at the card for today. We have the Chariot, and this is again connected with Sunday. The Chariot is a card of organization, movement, management, and it's very closely connected to the Strength card because it is one of power. What I love about this modern interpretation of the chariot is the chariot is absent. So instead of having someone pull the horses with a rein, having the horses have to carry something, we see two horses that are looking in separate directions. So what's happening for some of you is a moment, a momentary pause where you and someone else are deciding, are we in or are we out on this path together? So it could be partnership. And you might be deciding to take it to the next level or maybe deciding if it is enough. Uh, if it's business partnership or if it's a goal, you're looking and thinking, is this something that we both can do together or is my interest taking me down a path that's not compatible with what you're looking for? It's okay to go your own way if you want to. The most important thing that this chariot is inquiring or asking of you is what do you want? What are you looking for? We see a full moon behind it, so it's pretty, well, almost a full moon. You could kind of interpret that shading as maybe a, a waxing or waning gibbous, but very close. We're looking at within a few weeks, some of this stuff is going to start to manifest um, because we're, we're already getting close, closer to that. Um, so I would say, yeah, within the next week or so, you could start to see movement on this. And the question for you is, uh, again, what is, what is the purpose? What's the wish? What's the intention? Connecting it to the channeled messages earlier. Then the important thing for you is to set some sort of um, leadership in motion. Like I said, it's nice and empowered that the horses don't have anybody that's leading them. But if you've ever seen wild horses, it can be like a stampede. So there does need to be some general direction. All right. So freedom is good. Uh, but if you're going to do something, you're still going to need support and you need to make sure that you can depend on the people around you. If you want to take your own direction or path, that's fine. Make sure you communicate it to the people that you're working with. Make sure you fulfill your promises as well before moving on that path. And those are all the messages that I have for today. Today, again, if you had to figure out, OK, Nicholas, that's great. What do I do? It's about calling, writing or setting up an appointment so that something will happen. It's a triggering event. You're going to take control and you're going to make something move forward by by setting the intention. And it's on you. The onus is on you to sort of make that happen. So that was the energy for Sunday. Um, and again, the good news for today is I feel a sense of freedom of thought and I feel like things are going to start to move in the right direction. So it's a very good card for Sunday. As we take a look here at the energy for Monday, we have the Six of Wands in reverse. The cool thing with the Six of Wands, whether it's upright or reversed, it still carries with it the energy of success. So the first message that I have for you is that anything you set your mind to, you're going to see positive traction and movement. Why did it come through reversed, you might ask? It's because you're putting too much pressure on yourself or too much emphasis on how it's being received. So. In school, for instance, like if you didn't get an A plus, but you learned, uh, you know, an amazing amount and that's going to stick with you for the rest of your life, you got an A plus energetically in life. If you didn't finish first, but again, you are gaining skills and knowledge that are going to help you sustain and possibly finish first in the future. That's all that matters. The rank, the score, it's just one point in time and also Things like that are very subjective. When we think of art and music and literature, oftentimes in the, con the contemporaries don't understand what's going on. It's not until people look back with a historical lens or have advanced to a point that they understand what that person was trying to do that the true value is actually understood. So if people don't get it, their loss, and it's no loss to your overall value. So don't worry about trying to get an A+. Don't worry about trying to get first place. Don't worry about how you stack up against a friend, a relative, or a loved one, or what they think about you. What do you think about what you're doing? How, how successful do you feel on your sort of um, adventure and endeavor that you've engaged with? That's all that matters at the end of the day. I talked to Pisces about 
this sort of illusion that, uh, and also like a myth that lightning can't strike twice in the same place. What we see as a single bolt often ca contains several um, smaller bolts in the same energy. So already there's multiple strikes in the same spot. And uh, what I was talking about to Pisces was, you know what, we actually can strike twice or thrice or more than that. So you have the ability not necessarily to repeat history, but to continue to do amazing things. And it's not about repetition. That actually, that is not growth. That is just cookie cutter. So we're supposed to keep doing different things. Why not having some, have something equal or greater than? Let's open up the, the ability for you to surprise, to surpass, or somehow to move beyond expectations, which in the moment may be six of wands reverse. People are like, I think I like it, but it's not what I thought it would be. That's oftentimes for me, my favorite musicians give me the six of wands reverse energy where I know I like them. I know they're talented. It's not what I wanted, but over time, it's one of my favorite albums because it challenged me because uh, it, it sticks with you and it, and it not forces, but it encourages you to look at something from a different angle. So on Monday, stay true to your vision, challenge people to see it from a different perspective and just let it sit, don't worry. If you get a little bit of negative feedback, remember what I put in the channeled messages, the nine of wands, you're gonna push beyond that. It's one opinion. Don't let it create the 10 of swords energy where it gets into your head, gets into your energy and it deflates or defeats you. That's not the purpose. So I see value in anything you decide to touch or do. And I also think this is a great day, by the way, to have um, a difficult conversation. So for those of you that have to, you know, uh, if there's a legal matter that you need to discuss, if there's negotiation or persuasive arguments that need to be made, it does look like you start to make a dent in that. Uh, it may not be completely finished on Monday, but you're, you're treading in the right direction. So I feel like it's going to be a productive day. There'll be a few surprises, but ultimately you're going to be able to set a really positive tone for the rest of the week. And that's ultimately a very good thing. Okay, let's move on to the energy of Tuesday. We have seven of pentacles, which is growth and development, but it carries with it a warning to not rush things. So the seven of pentacles in reverse is basically saying good things take time. And, you know, we use the metaphor of those dandelion seeds. You blow it out in the wind and you wait for them to grow. It may take a while. That, that wouldn't happen overnight necessarily. So let me pull the traditional seven of pentacles while I'm talking and I'll just highlight uh, some of the messages from this. Here we go. Came up pretty quickly here. So here's your seven of pentacles. And what you can see here is a tree or a bush or some sort of plant growing. And it's starting to produce. You're seeing the fruits of your labor, but it's not like Jack and the Beanstalk where you plant it overnight and all of a sudden, you know, it's, it's growing <laughs> several stories high. Good growth and sustainable growth and recovery takes time, energy, and patience. And so when the seven of pentacles is reversed, it's basically wishing that you had that Jack and the Beanstalk moment where everything was all the way to the top. So give yourself time. You are going in the right direction, but look at how these are associated with the colors of our chakras. So what we're focusing on right now is the sort of grounding and expression and power dynamics very much the colors that I'm wearing, the color that we saw with the dandelion, all of that energy is represented. So do find your grounding and figure out where you stand, what you want to fight for, what you're tired of fighting about, and then give yourself time and patience to see the growth for that. Don't lose track of the dream, um, you know, your, your insights and your ability to communicate well. Balance everything out. I really think that uh, Tuesday is presenting an opportunity for balance and growth and eventual healing and movement, but maybe not at the speed that you had kind of like wanted it to be. The uh, Seven of Pentacles is also a warning to not overextend or not overpromise. So when it comes to your time, to your energy, and to any of your money, of course, you want to be very mindful of how much, how often, and make sure that you can uh, return on any of the sort of favors or promises that you make that you're, you're going to be able to stand behind your word. Okay. That's most of what I see. You, you might also be sort of feeling like I need to take some time. I need to rest. So do that. This is a day for recovery to set in. We have a beautiful, very sort of productive energy midweek. So far, this is the highlight. I would say Monday was pretty good, but we're seeing things coming into focus on uh, Wednesday. So we have the three of pentacles reversed, and this is about focusing on 
putting things into motion. This is a card of recognition. So people may finally see the work that you're doing and they may have overlooked it before. That's why it's reversed. And they're like, oh, you did that? Or why didn't you say that? Or anything of that nature. You might also be looking at something that you did and you, you're thinking, gosh, this is actually really good. Why don't I why don't I share this? Why don't I do something about it? So this is a day where you want to shop things around and get people to see it. The traditional three of pentacles, which I'm going to show here. I love these abstract cards, but I also want to show some of the missing pieces. Um, in the three of pentacles, you would see someone putting finishing touches on uh, great work, usually architectural, and other people taking note and taking notes. So there could also be scrutiny. People would be looking at the details and asking you questions. So one thing that you want to be ready for is believing in yourself and thinking, yeah, this is good. They just want to hear you say that sometimes with the Three of Pentacles reverse. They're saying like, did you do your homework? Where did this come from? Uh, can, I, can I trust this is really what they're looking at. So you notice the people looking at his fine work, maybe asking a question or two, but ultimately this card represents higher education, completion, um, positive reviews, and maybe even teaching for some of you too. You might have a chance to show how you did it. Um, so if they ask, they're probably going to be intrigued and then very impressed by the work that you did. So make sure that you have your research, your homework, whatever, it's all sorted out. So when that moment happens, you're like, yeah, and actually here's how and here's why. And that's what's going to get you um, through to the next level. OK, if you do want to do anything with respect to um, editing a contract, writing or recording something or getting someone to sign something on the dotted line. This is a pretty good card for that. They're going to see value in it and you see sort of community or connections happening. Really great day for um, for writing, recording and contract work. And this is a good day to get the, the ball in the right direction. So what we see here might be negotiation or compromise, but by midweek, you're in a really good place. As we look at the energy for Thursday, we have the Prince of Cups. And we see him very much in touch with his emotions, his dreams, his wishes, and um, inter inner work is going on here. We have introspection, uh, and I would say also just kind of like reconnecting to what it is and why it is that you're doing what you're doing. This is a card of intuition, creativity, and love. So for those of you that are looking for a day where you could focus on relationships, Thursday is the best day. Hanging out with friends, going on a first date, trying to smooth the wrinkles over even in business with someone who you haven't been able to hit it off with. This is a great day. Keep it a little bit more conversational and light. So for, for any sort of business engagements, this might mean going and getting a coffee or doing lunch, um, trying to keep it more casual, not so buttoned up. And for uh, first dates, the same thing is going on. It should be something fun and playful, not overly serious. And that's going to open the door for more love and more uh, depth to come through on that. Remember that you call in your own sort of similar energy, like attracts like. So this is reflecting on where you need to do the work and also realizing that you are complete with or without somebody. So again, I always like to complain about that one line in Jerry Maguire. Nobody completes you. You complete yourself. You find fulfillment within. People reflect and celebrate and can enhance what you have completed but they are not the missing piece. They are like salt and pepper on top. It's an accent, it's a little bit extra. It's the cherry on top. But many of you are ready for that little bit of extra to come in. So keep solid with that sort of understanding that you are amazing, you are enough, and whoever comes into your life is lucky to partake of that energy as well, okay? But Thursday's a good day for people, great day for anything artistic, Great day to smooth things over. Just an overall fun day, too, because we're looking at the energy. You know, this might be a little bit frustrating, but by midweek, you're actually in your sweet spot. This is very temperance oriented, even though we see, you know, the prince or the knight of cups. By the way, since it is a knight, sometimes that gets lost when we have prince or princess. Um, with knight, this is also saying you're going to take the lead. This is a very sort of passive knight, but I, I normally see knights as being ready. Uh, I think he's patient. He's ready to sort of like move forward, but he's waiting for the right moment. And I like that combination in the card. Now let's take a look at Friday. So when you have something like indecision, which would be the two of swords and it's reversed, it's saying, I know what I want. And so the word on the bottom is actually decisions. And now you're going to limit or choose a path. And the two of swords reverse is clarity on what it is that you seek, what it is that you want and where it is that you stand. So. It feels like you're clear 
by the end of the week. And it's a good day to ask questions. If someone is sort of on the fence, you can also help them by not necessarily telling them what to do, but asking them questions like, what, you know, how do you feel about this? What's your opinion on this? What if we tried this? So your way into a decision would be to kind of like walk them through their own mental process and help them see what they already know. And for yourself, the same is true. You already know, and you might just need to think to yourself a, a question like, you know, not what have I got to lose, but, you know, what could I possibly accomplish with this? Because, you know, and if, and if I don't do this, would I have a regret? Ask it more in the affirmative or in the more positive way of looking at it, where if I do this, could I possibly achieve this and this? How good would that feel? Why am I not doing this? And then the worst that would happen is this. That's not really that bad. So kind of talk your way into, if you need to, the necessary choice. And ultimately, the two of swords is just saying, throw down one of those and take action and become an ace or a page with that. Okay. And that's what I see. You'll be able to make a decision by the end of the day, but the beginning of the day could be a little foggy. So the other thing is maybe you would benefit from partnering up with a mentor, someone that can kind of coax the realization uh, to the front of your sort of visual path, because you do know on a heart level, but your mind is getting in the way a little bit. All right. Looking at the weekend, uh, I actually really like the energy of Saturday. It's connecting with the patience here. So if you've been working on something, the fruits of your labor are coming through. On a Saturday, we have the Love or Ace of Cups card. Again, a beautiful reflective energy. So your positivity, your hard work, it's shining through and someone's going to notice. It's a great day to spend with children, with uh, loved ones, with if it's your first date or if there's any sort of initial interactions. You can't go wrong with the Ace of Cups. It's new beginnings, but it is saying connect it to the heart space. You're missing out if you're not. Put your passion into it. Have some fun. Take some time for yourself. This isn't a day where you want to kind of like be in hermit mode uh, away from other people. Use that connection and um, see where it leads because it could be the spark for a new friendship, a new project, new love, something great. The Ace of Cups is, is seeking out. Um, a playmate, basically. So see what you can do to connect with others. And I think next Saturday is going to be amazing. All right, let's take a look at the energy of Sunday. So this is also you coming out of your shell and seeing something maybe, you know, in the in its true form for the first time. So this card, it says isolation, but the eight of swords is also kind of like it's a blindfold card. It's one of the two, the two of swords. You've got two cards, actually. You've got the, both of the blindfolds. They're not blindfolded here, but I'll, if I need to bring up the traditional ones, I will. But normally we would see a person on a path, in front of a path, blindfolded. Then we see someone in a prison of their own creation with the Eight of Swords. So when that's removed, both of these, you're saying, okay, I see what I want to do. And now I see that I'm free, which is actually taking us back to the chariot message from today. So I'm going to pull the two uh, Swords cards just so we can see them. And, uh, and then we'll go from there. So with the Eight of Swords in reverse, which is, here's the traditional Eight of Swords. So oftentimes the person feels like, I don't know what to do. The reversal of this is, is actually certainty and clarity. So by the time we reach a week from today, you will be at a point where you say to yourself, you know, I can, I can do this. Yes, I may have some things that are not completely ironed out, but it also is an understanding that life in general is that way. Um, so it's kind of those twists and turns that make life fun. Uh, the universe is kind of asking you to get comfortable with ambiguity. So this would be the energy for Friday, and this is the energy for Sunday. This is basically the opposite of this, which is saying, I know which path to take. And this is the opposite of the, this, which is I am free to choose to do this. So some of you may have been told from someone in the past, Again, you can't because, because of age, because of gender, because of experience, because of school, choice, whatever. That doesn't hold true anymore. These old ways of thinking are kind of dying out anyway. So this is a chance for you to see it from um, a different perspective and to challenge those old ways of thinking. Okay, so quick review of the week and then we're going to move along to um, the next energy here, which I think is uh, blessings and blocks. So... Uh, Today is a day to take control, to take charge, and to also decide, am I going to partner with this person or continue on this path or go my own way? You get that choice. On Monday, we see success coming in, the Six of Wands, but there's a, a reminder that you're not doing something solely for approval or solely for success. 
you're the compass. Your inner heart is the compass for what's right. And when it comes to soul review at the end of your days, you judge success and worth, not necessarily others, okay? On Tuesday, patience is the main message. We see growth and recovery, but impatience can lead to a hasty decision, overextending yourself, which you don't want to do. So be mindful of time and energy and money, making sure that you're not spending too much in any direction or committing too much. You're very good by Wednesday. Three of Pentacles is acknowledgement. It's also success. Again, another success card. For those of you that want to uh, learn something new, this is a good day for soaking things up and ultimately probably one of the most productive days. Uh, we see a really great connection coming through on Thursday. So if there's anything that you need to do with another person, um, Monday's great, but Thursday's better. And I think it's a great day to spend with those that you love. We get another similar energy on Saturday, but this is kind of like the beginning. So for those of you that plant a seed of, you know, let's get together, let's do something, it feels like it comes to fruition on the weekend. Friday is really about making a, a choice and not second guessing yourself. Ultimately, you can always course correct, you can always edit or add something, but um, eventually you just have to choose a path or a direction. And that's really what Friday is about. It may be hard to get someone else to commit, but ultimately you're going to make your mind up at the end of the day. Have some fun, take a break, refocus on and reset on Saturday, spend time with others, spend time doing something creative. And then getting comfortable with not being able to see everything. You're intuitive, but you don't have to have every single thing lined up. You're, you're able to kind of tune in in real time, and that's basically what Eight of Swords Reverse is saying, okay? Um, let's go ahead now. I'm going to shift all of the cards here, and we're going to then take a look at the next portion, just so you know where we're at. If you just joined, uh, we just got through the seven-day forecast, and now we're going to look at Blessings and Blocks. Blessings and Blocks basically allow us to see something that's going to really elevate, something that could be challenging. So with the cards moved into position now, let's go ahead and shuffle and take a look at Blessings and Blocks. I think for this, I'll use a different deck just because it's fun to change it up. So let's do that. All right. Blessings and blocks. We have a blessing of five of wands and we have a block of the lovers, which is actually a really great card to come through. So I feel like you have a good week in store. All right. For the blessing, five of wands. So for many of you, this is going to be a busy week. The five of wands represents a lot happening. Um, but the opportunity is partnership within that. So try not to lose yourself. Try not to um, get so kind of lost in the energy of productivity or work that uh, somehow you get burned out or somehow you lose this sort of inspiration. Because um, a big part of the power of this week was in the Knight of Cups and the, and the Ace of Cups card. So connecting to the heart space will help you get through this. Ultimately, if we take the five of wands and amplify it and look at the positive, it's saying a lot of work can get done. What's the block? It's almost like these are in reverse. Your block is the lovers, which is there's so much energy around play, fun, partnerships and relationships. We see Cupid's arrow there that you may be distracted. You may decide, I want to spend time with friends. I want to spend time doing this project that I love. I want to spend time nurturing this new relationship or connection in my life. And therefore, it's hard to focus. So I think your big challenge this week, if we pair the two together, is how to get the work done and how to have basically work-life balance. And if you can achieve that this week, you'll be in a good place. We didn't get any very dark or challenging cards here. They're, they're very manageable. So this is just about cooperation and collaboration, not fighting, not competing, but finding what? The love, the partnership, and the connection. So we can really read them together because together they make a lot more sense. So there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of distractions taking you away from that work. You don't have to sacrifice either or. You can find a way to blend the two. And that's the message for the blessings and blocks for this week. All right, the next piece that we're going to look at um, is the elemental forecast. We're going to take a look at fire, earth, air, and water, and I'll break down each and every uh, card and message. So let's turn the camera down and shuffle the cards, and we'll go through that. Fire, earth, air. We have two for water, um, so we'll honor that. Okay, let's go ahead and begin for fire. So for fire, we have the Four of Cups and the Four of Cups Reverse. This is for Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius out there. Let me go ahead and zoom in on this real quick because it's a beautiful card. So if you take a look at this in the upright position, 
what we see is the sort of higher self peeking through and trying to give you a hint that there's something beautiful, there's something amazing that could be like a, a stone unturned. So here we see like that rose underneath the cup, but uh, the cup was upside down. So if we kind of take this metaphor and say, leave no uh, stone unturned, that's really the important thing. You might be missing something that's right under your nose, that's available, that's really there as a blessing. So um, take a second look at everything in front of you. Also, I always see the Four of Cups as a hidden blessing or hidden opportunity. It doesn't come in the shape, the form, or the time that we expect sometimes, but perhaps it's better than we anticipated, and maybe it has something that we need in that moment. So a lot of times we call in what we need, not what we want. And this card is reminding you to not discount something just because on surface it didn't meet initial expectations. So very powerful message there. It's also saying that very little good comes from comparing your life and path with someone else. And if we look at the cards here on the table, very much connected to the energy that we saw here on Monday. So I mentioned that with the success card or the six of wands here, um, when it's reversed, it's basically saying, you've got this. It just isn't going to come in the package, in the way, in the shape that everyone wanted. So again, there's a reminder here that you walk your own path. For many of you, there is this um, an awakening that's happening. And you're starting to see through old facades, old patterns, and old things that used to serve you. And there's a higher calling coming through. So maybe you're actually seeing that fourth cup. You're seeing the ace of cups, which again, for... Uh, this reading this week, let's see, that would be next Saturday. So um, for for my fire signs out there, your epiphany, your aha moment, the, the day where everything kind of comes together, it is Saturday. And it's like, oh, that's what this was all about. Finally, I'm starting to see movement on this. It is worth it. So I do get a time marker for fire signs. Um, stick with it. Stay positive. We see the initial energy coming through in the Knight of Cups around Thursday but the payoff coming uh, around Saturday with the Ace of Cups. Uh, and then again, that's that hidden Ace that's always in the Four of Cups. So it could be unexpected love, could be someone that sees something from your point of view, could be an invitation you didn't expect, an opportunity that you didn't anticipate, or something that you just forgot. And you're like, oh yeah, I need to talk to that person. I need to write them back. I need to do this. Listen to that voice and do it. It's worth your time. It's worth your energy. Something beautiful could come of that. Back to the Four of Cups reverse, which is saying don't compare yourself. Um, your trajectory is your own. Someone else, we never know the work they did in this life or in others. We never know what may face their sort of path next or what they're facing next. So just you judge you, you do your thing, let them swim in their own swim lanes. You're going to be happier and more successful in doing so. Um, but ultimately, a hidden blessing, a hidden opportunity coming through in a, a clarifying moment on Saturday, an initial on, on Thursday, and then really clearing up by Saturday. So you have an exciting week with two points where um, the window's kind of opening and there's a, an epiphany or an aha moment, and I think it's going to be really great for you, okay? Don't get focused on other people's business or distracted by their progress. Be happy for them if they're succeeding. Get inspired. Put that energy into your own life. You are fire after all, so kindle that flame, that passion, and you're going to surprise yourself and others. Okay, that's fire. Let's move on to earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. This is a month or month. This is a week of revelation. Um, the moon card comes through to show you that you don't have to be afraid anymore, right? Because the, if we look at it in the upright position, sometimes there's this feeling of fear, uncertainty, doubt, something, something is being revealed maybe that you didn't want to look at. When it's reversed, it's saying, I don't need to be afraid anymore. I can trust my instincts. That's the other thing on this one. Your instinct will not lead you astray. There's always a path between the two animals at the front, between the dog and the wolf or the dog and the coyote. Um, there is this beautiful path towards enlightenment. We see the two towers. We see the um, basically the third eye or the um, eye of Ra in there. And it's basically saying, all right, let's move into my higher purpose, my higher calling. I'm not going to get distracted with what? Competition or fear. The only thing that's missing from this is... Yeah, I can't see, it's not showing up on here. We see like little amoeba here, but normally you would see a crab or a lobster or something coming from the water. So uh, don't overlook your own sort of hopes or dreams. Don't give power to fear. Because of the absence of that element, there's actually just a little bit of warning. But the fact that I do see an amoeba 
If you look really closely, you can kind of see it right there, right? It's not just a star. It's kind of like an amoeba, which you would see in a pond or in different types of water. Um, it's saying, I can move. I can, I'm flexible. And we see the sort of uh, river going here. So you're going to be asked to make some twists and turns. Your patience, your flexibility, your ability to also think your way through something, it's all going to be activated this week. Um, but you can do that. Uh, I think what could be frustrating because you like things so concrete, Earth wants to see it in black and white, you're being asked to go with the flow. <laughs> and the, the good news is as we look at the, you know, the, the weekly messages here, I would say you do start to see things coming through on Tuesday and Wednesday in a more concrete form. So ultimately, you're just being asked to be patient um, at the very beginning and maybe through the latter part of the week. But you will get your uh, some of the evidence, but the rest of it is trusting and hoping and having faith. Um, your faith will be tested, but uh, but you're going to be able to intuit this, all right? One very cool thing whenever the moon comes through, reversed especially, is it's saying, I see through any sort of attempted lie, deceit, or manipulation. It's going to come straight through your th third eye, and you're going to see it and say, not today. <laughs> so if someone's doing something wrong or is acting in a way that is not um, accountable or honest, raise your hand and say, wait a second, we agreed to this, right? Um, maybe you forgot or maybe I wasn't clear. Correct him in the moment. Course correct. And that's that's what this week is going to give you a chance to do. OK, but it's a position of power. The moon card is one of the major arcana. It is a strong card. It rules the tides. So the day that you can do that is right now. Whenever you watch this, either Sunday or the day that you watch it, the chariot, like I said, is missing the reins. I see it as a liberating message, but also it is a deficit. We do need someone to set things into motion. And there may be a parting of the ways. You'll be stronger for the parting of the ways if you have to. Okay, let's move on from my fire. I'm sorry, from my earth signs to air. So now we're going to look at Gemini, Libra and Aquarius. You are getting some of that evidence and, and uh, tactile information that the earth signs were looking for. We have the three of pentacles, which actually shows up this week. So we have um, a timeline for you. So again, looking at um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it's coming through midweek. So the strongest day for all of my air signs will be midweek. The card was reversed, however, just like it was in the spread, which is saying you're going to really focus on the details and you're going to be asked to do what you said you were going to do. So walk the walk and talk the talk. Very important for you to scrutinize any sort of uh, any agreements that you make, particularly uh, written ones. Make sure that you don't promise more than you can deliver. Make sure that other people deliver what they said they were going to deliver. If they don't, you actually are in a very strong legal standpoint because it's in black and white. This is a good day for you to do something that you like. I didn't go into this when we were looking at the seven day, but three of pentacles reverse is saying, I choose to do this because it's fulfilling, because the expansion that I get in my mind and my, my heart and my soul it's better than any degree. It's better than any external validation. This is also saying don't put too much into what people say, uh, you know, their external thoughts. Take it with a grain of salt. Three of cups, three of pentacles reverse. It is external. You're going to have a little bit more constructive element with the three of pentacles. But still, at the end of the day, you get to choose how much you want to integrate. So there's always a grain of truth. There's always something valuable when someone says something. But you are ultimately the one that decides, is this good for me? Uh, but you have a great week ahead. I can't really find much critical with this. I feel like when it comes to matters of work and money, I see things taking off in a really good direction. If you're writing or editing anything, you're going to finish it. You're going to get it to the next chapter. You're going to see a very, very productive week. This is a teamwork card too. So people are going to value your input. It's a good week for air signs, okay? The only thing you want to look at is not taking, not being a perfectionist, not taking too much to heart, you know, constructive criticism. It's being given to you with good intentions. You can, you can kind of push back if something isn't right for you. That's the only thing that I can see. Otherwise, you're going to get a lot done and you're going to be seen as a very valuable teammate, team member, all right? For water, you got a bonus card. And so I'm going to read both because these are very uh, wildly different energies. First, we'll focus on the one that I pulled, and then we'll look at the bonus one. Four of Wands, couldn't ask for a better card. Partnership, support. This can be read either as romantic or platonic. And ultimately, just like I, I was talking about with our air signs, you have a chance to really connect well with other people. This is more in the realm, I mean, like you can use this any way you want to, this sort of gift and energy. 
But I do think that many of you are just deciding to spend more time with the people that you love. Um, but if you do need to negotiate anything this week, people want to just spend time with you. Make sure that you start first with um, how they're doing, taking some time to get to know them. Don't just dive straight into the facts. Maybe our air signs can do that. But um, when I'm looking at water, you have to you have to have an icebreaker. You have to warm up the conversation before you go straight into it. Those relationships that you build right now and during this week are going to be something that could stick around as well. So I really think it's key to focus on existing, new, and evolving relationships. Now for the interesting piece. So we got the devil card that popped out on top of this. One thing that I'm looking at here is to not, we mentioned strength earlier. Strength is a control card, the chariot is a control card, and this is the ultimate one. So with the devil, we want to remind ourselves that it isn't our path or our purpose to try to change people. We accept them unconditionally. So if someone wants to make a change in their life and there's no harm done, and it's something that you can't affect, let them do it. Like, it's not your choice. Um, so this is basically stepping back. Uh, you know, if you're looking at self, how you can avoid the devil, it's just saying, if they want my help or advice, I'll give it to them. If there's nothing that they're putting themselves into danger on, like, that's their path. That's their decision. So let go of what you can't control. This is also saying for people that come into your life, don't get bullied or pushed into something that doesn't feel right for you. Someone may try to use or abuse their relationship with you, and you're going to say, not today. <laughs> um, there could also just be a wonderful Capricorn coming into your life, by the way, because this is a lovely card, and this is associated with Capricorn. So in that case, it looks good. One warning that comes through here is to not mix work and pleasure. So this could be best friends or family or blood relatives, and this could be a contract. In that case, things could get a little tricky. So this is a time to really keep those sort of things separate. And if someone comes through and they want to do business with you, but you value the friendship more, give them a referral and say, you know what, I'll help you find someone, but I'd rather just keep these things separate. You always have the choice to do that. I think those are the main messages here. So it's a pretty good week overall because your main energy was the four of wands. Your challenge is about not, not sort of getting um, things intermixed or intermingled when it comes to work and uh, possibly personal life. The only other thing that I can see with this is if someone's not available or if you're not ready to do something, don't agree to that either. The devil is entanglements as well as control. So if someone hasn't gotten through a divorce or they're married or you don't have the free time or the energy to commit to a relationship or a project, just say no right now. It's better to say no and focus on both parties and both energies being receptive. All right. So that's everything for all of the elements. And uh, I believe now we are ready for the main topic. Uh, I'm going to save the reader's choice for after we get through the Celtic cross because it gives me a chance to see things a little bit clearer. Same thing, I usually add in a big idea as well, so we'll put that in later. I'm going to go ahead and clear the cards right now. And while I'm doing that, just a reminder in case you joined what our special topic is going to be. So um, by a pretty good amount, we got Heal and Reveal the Karmic Lesson. So this for some of you could be karmic partnerships. For some of you, this could be your life purpose. It could also just be what's holding you back. We're going to uh, let the cards basically do the walking, and uh, then I'm going to pull together what I'm receiving from spirit. So let me pull the camera down. We're going to put the full Celtic cross out and see how you can heal and reveal karmic lessons throughout your life. Give me one more second here to expand it, and then we'll take a look at the messages here. Again, this portion is for everybody that's joined. If you missed anything, it will be available uh, on replay later. Some really powerful messages already coming through. The, the end of sort of this, this path of being stuck or being controlled. I like that.
I'm using different decks, but it's always cool when they seem to be kind of continuing the general energy there. Right. Let's uh, so much energy coming through from your crown chakra there with all the purple and and uh, yeah violet energy. So beautiful. You're actually very connected right now in this path. So I can't wait to see how this all factors out. So let's bring through your catalyst card first and foremost. So the catalyst is the destroyer card, and the destroyer card is reversed. So whenever we have to step away from a path. Um, there's often this fear of what's going to happen next or what am I if not this, right? And if we look at the center of this, it almost, you can see like the eyes of an owl, um, wisdom, that sort of energy of knowing that I've been through this before, I can do this again. So heal and reveal the current karmic lesson. The first thing that I would say is that this is an, um, a beginning, not an end, that there's an illusion sometimes that as we go through something, that that's all that there is. So... Um, know this, you are okay, you are supported, and although it may feel like this is intense and this is it, it's not. You're going through a tower moment, some of you karmically, and that means that um, oftentimes we have to wait for the universe to kind of like nudge us. And so this big karmic lesson, it feels like it could be easy if you allow it, but currently the energy is sort of in such a way that you want it to be black and white. You want to know that without a shadow of a doubt, you're making the right choice. You're making the right decision. And for that to happen sometimes, things like an argument, a layoff, someone walking out or storming out, hurt feelings, things like that will happen so it's a sting and so that you are then inspired to go beyond that. You don't have to go there, though. You can just recognize that kind of like when we were looking at the two horses and they were at the two different junctures. I've already moved the cards to the side, but it's sort of like the chariot card where there's a choice. Are we going to go on this path or am I going to go in another direction? And that's the big choice here. The destroyer card is something that you can control. There can also be a lot of fun in this. So, you know, when I think of like Shiva or death or any of the sort of energies of um, creation and destruction, they're one and the same. In order to allow for something new to come in, it has to be leveled out. So we're, we're stardust. We're constituted from stardust. Uh, there was once a big star in the sky or, or many that went supernova that created all the heavier elements that are here on this planet. So from destruction comes reconstruction and creation. So you are at the precipice of something new. If you already have gone through your tower moment, it's about turning the page. Um, for those of you that are in it or about to go through it, it's a reminder that even a big shift is not the end of the world. It seems like it when you go through it, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel and there is the wisdom from your soul to bring you through this. So you can kind of look at that as an owl or an alien. Either way, it's showing that you've had an experience prior to this. By the way, we look at that and I also see a twin star in here. Um, so that is how I look at I don't Twin flames, I don't really talk about them much on this channel because I think sometimes we put too much focus or energy on that. And um, But a twin star to me is someone who shines with the same energy, luminance, luminosity rather, and um, general sort of soul path that you have. So you're getting, you're, you're, you're very close to attracting someone that's on a very similar frequency. When these two energies come together, it also means in your life there could be some radical changes. Could be friendship, could be a child, could be a loved one that's coming in. But either way, this new partnering energy um, is significant. So I do see love coming through. And what we want to clear for you is anything from the past that is uh, less than <laughs> less than satisfactory or would put this on shaky ground. We want it to be a clean slate and a firm foundation. That's what the tower reverse would, would be doing and saying, let's look at how to make this better. So that's what we're going to look at in this spread to start with. We're going to begin with the, the centermost card. It's one of the two stars that I saw there, and it's representing a rebirth. So the sun is, is one of, you know, a few, like four different cards that can show children in tarot. But it's one of the strongest ones, this and yeah, because it's in the major arcana. Um, so this and the Empress uh, would kind of go hand in hand because one is showing the promise of something to come and this is showing the realization. 
So what we see with the sun is what I said earlier when it came to six of wands and three of pentacles in reverse. And the simple truth in this is it's valuable to hear, but you are enough for you. You are whole, you are complete, and you are capable of reinvention. You are not stuck in any one part of your life, whether you are just going you know, to college, whether you're mid-career, whether you're retired, uh, or anywhere in between. It's basically saying that we put in a template that we think will work, but it's not set in stone. It's more like wax paper. <laughs> and we can rip it away or we can trace something new and say, well, I'm going to try that instead. So the first message is birthing and rebirthing. The second is connecting to source. We see her almost, um, it's almost like she's flying a kite, but she's reconnecting to source energy. And there's liberation in this. And the sun is ultimately a very playful card. Let me pull the traditional Rider Waite Smith while we're talking. All right, if we look at these side by side, what you'll see in the traditional deck is this little baby riding on a horse with all the sunflowers around him. Um, sunflowers are heliotropic. They follow the light of the sun. The sun in this deck is the baby um, and also the sun behind him. And in this deck, it's the, the woman and the connection that she has to the source energy. So the heliotropic piece is important. It makes an appearance also in the Queen of Wands. Heliotropic, fancy word for sunflowers, follow the direction of the sun and they trace it across the sky from morning to evening until they reach maturity and then they just recede. But um, what, what you're representing is the light. So be the light. Don't be the one following the light. So what she realizes here, what I like about this is she is the light, right? And what he's also realizing, he's not even paying attention to it. He's just having joy and being connected to that sort of, um, that the energy of creation, right? So this is the energy of creation, and this is understanding that you are source. And then the sunflowers are all of the people and opportunities that you call in because of that. So what's the karma? Well, there's a couple things here. Someone is going to try to hold you back or may try to um, make you feel less than or uncertain because of this. This is a card of control or contracting or I want you to do it this way. But you are very liberated in this moment and you are saying, but I'm going to do it this way. Um, so this is your chance to move in a separate path if you need to. And when we look in the deep past, which also, this is like a diagonal between the three here. So this is you and your power. This is what's coming through from the past, which is, you know, you've, you've maybe not looked at something that's been calling to you or someone else has made you look beyond it. It's coming back now. This, this true you, this, this dream, this energy is coming through. And no matter how attractive the offer is, because we have a beautiful devil here, <laughs> someone may try to really make it seem like you need to stay, but part of what you want to do is go your own way, okay? And I can think of experiences in my life where, particularly is with work, you know, like maybe they put more money on the table or a different title or tried to sweeten it and it wasn't what you wanted, but they were like, but, but you can have this instead. But you knew it was really, there were strings attached. So stay true to your soul, to your source and to your vision and be willing to walk away from something that seems sweet because something sweeter may be awaiting you. Let's not skip this, the card that's uh, crossing this. So what is the temptation or where is it uh, kind of centered? The wheel, the wheel of fortune. Money, life purpose, primarily. Um, so notice how she's tugging and pulling at the energy of time and space. So things can speed up or slow down based on her belief and her investment in herself and in her journey. This is a very... Um, kind of like Las Vegas style Wheel of Fortune because we see the chips and we see the two dice at the center here. And it's basically saying, is it worth the risk? Are you willing to take the chance on yourself? Uh, are you comfortable with a certain level of ambiguity? There's always risk associated with growth and you're, you're basically looking at, am I a safe bet? Is this the thing that I want? So you're evaluating risk. I believe that when it comes to yourself, your path, your vision, it's worth it. And it's really, when you're willing to invest everything in that, then things start to really come to focus. So some people just want to see, do you believe in yourself? Are you ready? Will you do it? How far will you go? When we look at people like professional athletes uh, that basically sacrifice a lot, there is a sacrifice. There is a trade-off on that. So you're just being asked how much are you willing to put into it energetically. It doesn't have to mean money. It's like heart and sweat and blood, is blood, sweat and tears basically more than money is what I'm getting from this. If you're willing to put the work in though, I see some really great energies moving you forward, okay? 
let's um, let's take a look at a couple of other things here. The other karmic lesson is worth. So one was control. So this is you wanting to go on a path and follow your your own way. And we see someone holding you back here or trying to tempt you to to do it their way. And so that's the first narrative is that you can do this yourself and you're going to break that path of codependency or you're going to destroy that sort of need to have that person control you or whatever, and you're going to take the reins back. The other thing here is about worth. So we have the Wheel of Fortune coming in and saying, can you see how valuable you are? Can you see your your beauty, your light, your brilliance? I hope you can, because the universe can. What's holding you back? Maybe because nobody's told it to you like that before, like you are valuable. In this moment in time, when something comes through, it throws you off your, your, your sort of balance. You're like, I'm not used to that for some of you. And you could start to second guess yourself. Um, and then meanwhile, you might sacrifice something that's worth it. Don't be afraid to, if somebody's giving you less than. This is also what I see in the environment. Someone trying to get away with giving you less than you deserve. You're worth a lot more than that. So you're going to stand up to that energy of, uh, of negative net worth. And that usually comes from self-worth. The sun is what? A baby. And where does this come from? Childhood in a large part. And this could be a lack of support, encouragement from parents, from teachers, and maybe something someone that a friend told you when you were growing up. So the big thing that you can do right now is say, that doesn't serve me. That's not, that doesn't gel anymore. That was just something that as a young person, I didn't have the life experience and capacity to understand. But as a mature adult and as a person that's connected to my source and to my soul, I don't, it doesn't resonate anymore. Therefore, I can release that feeling of lack because it's holding you back. So let go of the hurt. The Ten of Swords and the Devil are cousins, basically. The Devil uses the Ten of Swords as one of his tools for manipulating or making things not go in the right direction. So you're going to cut the strings, codependencies, old pain, old trauma, old drama. You may need help in doing that, but that's the primary thing. There's something from youth for some of you that's there, or you've just built this up over time. So I'm here to remind you of two things, and we'll, we'll see more as we go through it. The first is this is your chance to turn a new corner. Anything that's fallen away or out of your life, it's, it's been lifted for a reason. And for the rest of you, if there's been someone or something that told you you're less than or you're not capable of doing something, um, you're, you're capable. You're more than capable of doing that. As we look at deep past with a little bit more scrutiny here, we have the Four of Cups in reverse. Blessings are incoming. Some things may not be obvious. We talked about this earlier. This is also your chance to pick up something that you put on the back burner. Four of Cups, I feel like some of you were just talked out of something. You, you, you had someone in your life that basically said, you're incapable of this, or this isn't appropriate, or this is what we intended for you, or you've already been accepted into this program, or you should just take this job because it's the first one that came along. Whatever it was, it was basically, you know, you knew that you didn't want to let go of that or you didn't want to go down that path, but now you know wiser and you realize, I can still reclaim it. The devil only has power if you give it power. And I am saying this enough now that it becomes one of my um, sort of trade phrases here, but the devil you know is still a devil. So if there's something you're doing because it's comfortable or predictable and it's not what you want, then you are being asked in this moment to think about what you could do instead of that. The big energy that we're working counter to is this. Um, comfort, because sometimes the devil is comfortable. It's just like, I don't... I could do more, but it's easier not to. So it's a lack of initiative or being sort of comfortable and not wanting to push through and explore. Sometimes it's fear, fear of success or fear of, of uh, failure. And sometimes it's just insecurity. But we're going to work through all of that because it's malleable and you're going to be able to overcome that no matter what. Just look at yourself in a different perspective. We see the rainbow leading to this cup. There's something beautiful and brilliant about proving people wrong and proving yourself capable and right. And that's the best way, actually, when you're faced with someone that um, does something that's unjust or doesn't have faith in you. Just prove yourself. Prove how amazing you are and live a really happy life. Happiness is the best uh, revenge. 
because it doesn't hurt anybody. It just helps you and it just helps you get fulfilled on your own path. And that's what's opening up to everybody right now is that that fulfillment. There is a little bit of work that has to be done. So this Four of Cups is about pushing through some of that feeling of, I don't know if I can do it. You can do it. But there's going to be some balancing and recalculating and recalibrating that's necessary. Eight of Cups. Eight of Cups is in the recent past. So this is a very sort of on-off energy, hot and cold. So some of you are tired of always kind of like being stuck in a plateau. And for many of you, this is a relationship energy. Karmically, why would it sort of be stuck? Why is someone not willing to commit and go to the next level? Eight of Cups is a good card, by the way. But sometimes if you're looking for someone to put a ring on the finger or sign a contract, it's not good because they want to just stay at the status quo. So again, for you, it's because of this ultimate card at the center. You have to sometimes be ready and willing to value yourself to enough to go down a different path. Here's the cool thing, folks. The Eight of Cups is not a shut door. It's saying, well, I'm really interested in this. Call me if you change your mind. Not an ultimatum. Basically, you connecting more to this saying, I have the power to do something else. Empowerment, empowerment, and a decision to walk towards that sun on the horizon. So it's saying, I have to explore this. And, uh, and if you ever want to come with me, that's great. But it's not saying me or this. It's just saying, this is my path. You're welcome to follow or you're welcome to call. So you can leave the door open if you'd like. And for some of you, this can also indicate a sabbatical. So let's say you've put a lot of good energy and effort into a job. And maybe it's in an educational or um, some sort of governmental position where sabbaticals exist. You could take a leave and you could decide to go for something that you want to. If you end up quitting or leaving a relationship, it may be on very good terms. And you could just say, I need to pursue this. Maybe it's school. Maybe it's just travel or something else to say. This is important for my life experience. So I'd like to connect with you when I get back. I'd like to see where we both are. But for right now, this is what I need. You're just stating what you need. And that breaks the ties of codependency. And unlike an ultimatum, it's not going to be something that's like either or. You can just say, let's let's revisit this. So some of you, that's going to be the way to uh, allow yourself to have growth without the fear of loss. Okay? For making and breaking cycles, this is actually good. So let's say you decide to invest in yourself and do something different. This means that things start to pick up and they're sustainable. It is a pattern of, of um, eventually it's kind of like something that will continue to break through to the next level, we'll have to look, but but starting something and seeing the momentum build, it's pretty good. This is what it's about, folks. If we look at your crowning card, which is the crown chakra as well, we have the high priestess. She's connecting with all of this beautiful violet and indigo energy we have over here in the expanded forecast. So this is the big purpose for this uh, karmic release or um, block that you have right now. So the high priestess is saying, you know what you need to do. So heal and reveal the karmic lesson. Are you listening to what your higher self is saying? It's the hardest thing sometimes, right? Just to sort of know, like, I need to talk to this person or I need to do this. And now is the time and I can't delay anymore. And what am I going to do about it, right? So she's really begging for some action to be taken right now. And as long as you're willing and ready to take that first step, things will start to shift. This is also a manifestation card, and this is why in the channeled messages I was talking about the dandelion seed head. You have to make a wish, set an intention, and then once you receive from the universe or from your heart, like the call to action, then follow through on that. So it's call and answer. Your answer will probably come faster than you anticipated, and for some of you that could be a little bit unsettling because you're like, but I want to, I just want to sit here a little bit more. It feels like things have, things are going to move quickly for you. Okay. Creativity, intuitive development, creative control, um, trusting what you see, seeing things you may not want to see, but deciding to do something about that. All of that is connected here. That's a big piece of this, which is maybe some of you are interested in changing the world. Um, the destroyer card, when re reverse is saying, I'm going to not just destroy for the sake of destroy. It's saying, I'm going to tear down things that don't work and rebuild. So you may be looking at 
social issues that bother you and you want to better them. You might be looking at the next generation thinking, I got to leave this planet better than I found it. Um, you might be looking at your own family and you want to make sure that you're creating a legacy. What's the legacy? What can you do to change the world for the better? What can you do to counter this? So the answer to the devil is enlightenment. So it would be information, positivity, love. Um, ultimately, if we were to take the traditional lover's card and devil's card and you put them side by side, one is about control and one is about elevation. One is conditional, one is unconditional. So you want to meet the devil with positivity, information, strength, uh, which we got in the channel messages, and then uh, basically unconditional love for yourself, that you're not going to let that bother you because all of the base energies of the devil aren't going to work. Fear tactics and intimidation, insults. We're seeing a lot of that in today's society, which is sad. A lot of negative comments and a lot of negative sort of energy. So if you don't have something constructive and kind to say, you really need to kind of look at that. And if someone else doesn't, it's sort of the same energy like, well, that's just cruelty and I don't need to really feed into that. Okay. When you pay no mind to it, the devil will put its energy in someone that will. It, there's always someone else out there. You're just going to say, you, you, you're knocking on the wrong door and you're going to help make a better place so that other people can do that. That's why I show up. That's why I'm sure you're showing up and you can help other people. It can be a positive chain reaction. All right. So you're not only going to just break it for yourself, but you're going to break it for others. Some of you have that higher calling. All right. Love is coming through. So the future opportunity, not just love, but higher love, folks. These are three of the cards that I would love to see for any relationship reading. The sun or the star represents a connection to source. We see it beautifully illustrated here. The page of cups is receptivity, saying I'm ready to, to open myself up to this. And the six of cups is the energy of like past life love and, and this sort of like friendship and, and best friend energy. Now, there are some things we're going to look at for those of you calling in a relationship. It's very karmic in nature. And what we see here is honesty to, at, at its core. The seven of swords... In the past, if I'm going to look at what your karmic cycle is, we're going to go there because it's here. And that's the whole reading today anyway. So um, the Seven of Swords is about accountability and honesty and sometimes trying to get away with something. So you or the other partner, uh, and this could be, we're going to look at love in a second, but it could be that sort of karmic lesson of honesty. You can't get away with it. It comes out in the wash some way, shape or form. This is also about trust and transparency. What we see here, though, is the promise of reparation and maturity. You're not that you're not that sort of template anymore, and your partner isn't either. So if you meet the person again, you're going to meet them and any future relationship with this, not this. This is hopes and opportunities, not just fears, but hopes and opportunities. This is what was. This is what can be. So we're going to elevate it into Six of Cups, which is friendship, transparency, family, and really nurturing one another. And it's the maturation saying, I've been through that. I don't need to repeat that. And that's going to cut the cords of the devil. Okay, well, let's go ahead and take it card by card just to give you some additional messages here. So in this moment in time, you are being opened up to receive more love. I love that we see a pig flying there right over top of the cup. Um, so not only can you get what you're wishing for, but there's better sense of self-worth and value coming in. And set your sights really high because you can get all of this and then some. And keeping your feet on the ground is one piece of this. This time around, you're not going to go head over heels. Um, you, can, you can feel like there's that capacity, but you're going to take a moment, take a deep breath, just enjoy where you're at and keep one, at least one foot on the ground so that you don't lose yourself because that can be what happens in this. This is saying it's not about me, it's about you. It's always about the combination of the two of you. So you don't have to dissolve, change, or lose yourself in someone else, because in doing that, you've lost your power, or you plugged it wholly into someone else and you're losing your ability to do things for yourself. So you're, you're, you can be together holding hands, but you don't wanna melt into each other, and that's the main thing that I'm getting in new relationships. Don't go so head over heels, okay? Find your work-life balance. Maybe in the past, in this life, not just karmically, like in this life, there's been too much focus either in work or in love because it can go either way. And you're going to focus on realizing it doesn't have to be binary. It doesn't have to be either or. It's a, this is the one area where you can have a little bit of the mix of the two. By doing that, interestingly enough, you're not going to lose yourself in the person. So... <clears throat> 
if there's a really strong relationship and the person allows you to pursue education, have have your own work life, have your own identity, you have the balance that you seek and you don't lose the sense of who's who in the relationship. So that's that's the key thing that I would look at there. Also, we're looking at uh, financial cycle changes that could be ancestral for some of you. Let's say there's been a family history in your sort of lineage here of money problems. Here's the cool thing. The center card is saying, not with you. You have the ability to bring in wealth. You just have to make smarter choices and maybe walk away from some of the naysayers. If they just project this out like this crow or, or raven saying, well, we don't have good luck in this family. You're not going to do this or it's going to fall apart. That's just one person's opinion. You're going to not devalue yourself. You're not going to empower them. You're going to focus on building better bonds and better relationships and connections. And you're going to cut yourself free of that cycle of, um, of issues with money. And this is ultimately saying you can have it all, actually. You can have self-worth and financial success. You can be creative and authentic and in charge. You can experience love. You can have good relationships. And you don't have to suffer and choose one of these over the other. This lifetime, you find a balance. It doesn't mean that in every step of your life, you have all of them. But it means over the course of your life, you're going to get a chance to dip your feet in the pool of all of these experiences and decide which ones you want to prioritize. And this ultimately is a card of making a choice. What do you want? One of the things that you can, with the seven and the two of pentacles, the universe wants you to make better choices. It's a harder line with the two of pentacles. So there is a, a decision right now to choose one thing as your primary focus. It does feel like love and relationships or something that brings joy into your life is taking center stage. Remember not to negate self-worth or self in the process. So everything we just talked about is a part of this. Maintain your self and your integrity. Allow for partnerships to be a part of this. Don't dissolve one for the other. Doesn't have to just be work. Doesn't have to just be partnerships. Doesn't have to just be the other person winning. There's a blending that's coming through. The devil doesn't like that. The devil wants all or nothing. You never want to sign a contract with someone that exhibits that energy because it's not going to be satisfactory. Now let's focus on the devil. So things are not what they seem. Your big understanding in this lifetime is that you have power. And here's the really cool thing that is often overlooked with this kind of card. This tells me you're on the precipice of something big because this only comes through as a temptation or as a question when you're about to break through. You're going to be okay because you see it. Why? Because look at your, your crowning card. This is being completely tuned in. And this is someone that's trying to pull one over on you. And it's not going to work. You've got this. So the main message right now is if something looks too good to be true and you know it is too good to be true, you're not going to accept it. If you know that there's a path that's challenging but fulfilling and it might take a little bit more work or effort, you're going to go for that because it's worth it. If there are people in your life that try to convince, manipulate, or somehow push you down, you're going to see past that. You have the vision. You have the sight. You wouldn't be here if you didn't. So now it's just more of a question of what to do about the insight and the, um, the third eye coming through loud and clear, uh, showing you what the path is. So we're going to expand the forecast to help you take action on it. But I am so heartened by the general spread here because everything that I see here is about empowerment, especially these two. This is power and then empowerment in the way of resources, money, or this sort of uh, opportunity that's presenting itself. Someone wants to hold you back. Energetically, something might want to hold you back, but you see the path. You're opening up to love. You're ready. You're not going to let that hold you back anymore. Seven of Swords is, by the way, in the environment. It's not you, and that's good. That's just saying that there could be a negative energy. There could be someone that's not quite showing up the way they need to. This could be the devil here, the Seven of Swords. And at the end of the day, that's just someone that doesn't keep their promises. So it's going to be very easy for you to identify. All right, let's go ahead now and move into the expanded forecast where we're taking a look at health, wealth, love, and destiny. Each one of these areas, we're going to get crystal clear on the karma associated with it. That's the primary question. So as I look at the oracle cards, what's the karma? And then as I look at the spread, how can you break the karma? So here's where we're going to magically bring this into focus. Health, what's the karma? We have a reversal on the health card. It says divine discernment, uh, step back to find clarity. So this 
is absolutely connected to this. What happens if you are so busy that you never stop to just take a pulse check or a temperature check to say, how do I feel? What do I think about what's going on around me? Because this could be a roommate situation, a work situation, or a family event where people are not doing the right thing. If you're too busy to notice or too busy to take action, then this just festers a little bit. So basically what we see with this is discernment, decision of like how much am, I, am being picky. The universe wants you to be picky here for your health, saying this isn't this doesn't gel with me. This isn't right. Or I need to change this or I need to affect change in this situation. This is the choice that's being presented to you. And you're being tugged between two things, one that might be in the heart, one that's in the head. You're going to have to follow what makes sense to you, okay? But ultimately with this, you're going to be able to see through something that no longer serves you. And the only way that you can do that is maybe by taking a break, which, by the way, came through right here in the Eight of Cups. So the Eight of Cups is saying, I need to step away for just a moment so I can understand this, so I can see it differently, so all of the pieces can come together. When you do that, you will be able to put it all together. And if we've, we just look at this trifecta here, taking a break, tuning in, trusting your heart. Then you're going to make a choice. You're going to make a choice for the better and you're going to cut the strings here. So you'll be able to see it, but you need to take a break. So that's the message here karmically. Some of you are working too much. Um, and maybe some of you are afraid to take this. It's, it's one extreme or the other here. You're either working too hard or you're afraid to take the first step. So whatever you need to do to get away from this and then take action once you've gotten that <clears throat> intuitive sort of call, this is the message, okay? Let's look at some additional messages here for health-related karmic cycles. By the way, I just like to always disclaim that I'm here to help you with energetic opportunities, um, metaphysical opportunities, but when it comes to your mental health or physical health, if anything's going on, obviously work with a professional. All right, with that being said, looking at the cards, the Seven of Swords legitimately comes through in the environment, which is saying that the big opportunity for you to be picky and discerning exists in the environment. We spend most of our time uh, either at school, work, or home. So these are the areas where I would seek out the biggest opportunity for improvement. Seven of Swords shows someone that isn't doing what they need to be doing. The distance that you take is that Holy Trinity that I was showing you. Um, you take the break, you get the insight, you emotionally know what to do about it. And that's going to help you understand in this situation. If it's a promise that hasn't been kept, you have to weigh out how much you trust that person. Was it just a white lie or was this someone who really hurt your feelings and really didn't come through the way they needed to? You and only you can decide um, if it's time to cut the cords or cut the connection. The good news is, no matter what this is, this is the promise of something new. So we do see, we take this guy out of the picture, we see something beautiful. So this isn't it. Again, the devil you know is just the devil and could be blocking you from higher love. This is higher love, connected to source, connected to source, connected to value, heart space open, making a choice for the better, walking away from this and achieving this. This is one last Here's the interesting thing when we're looking at health overall. There's a temptation after you've already made your decision. Someone comes back and says, are you sure? Or how about this? They're trying to sweeten the offer. Remember who and what you're dealing with if that's the case and make sure that it's worth that, okay? This also represents for some of you just walking away from something in your life. It, it could be a toxic relationship. It could also be an addiction. So you're going to maybe get the support or help that you need to battle that and to cope with that and to support yourself in that endeavor. Ultimately, we see that you're, you're ready, but it, it is a readiness with support. You don't have to walk this path alone in that case. There's power in numbers. And let me see if there's anything else here. Ultimately, that's it. I mean, that's a big thing. It's something in the environment that needs to be shifted. You're going to pick up on it. You're going to choose a different direction. There's a final temptation or final test that's associated with it, and then you'll be all right. Remember, though, either you talking to someone else or you separating yourself from the situation, you need to somehow get that clarity. The Six of Cups can be best friends and family, so you could, you could have trusted mentors around you that can also help you find that clarity if you just feel like you're in the weeds a little bit. Okay? Beautiful messages for health, things that you can manage, a beautiful opportunity here with these three cards, one gatekeeper that you're going to push through. You're, you're removing this. You're not going to go down that path anymore, okay? Looking at the energy around wealth and career, 
let's pull this card to the main camera. Um, it says reflecting pool stillness. Some of you are frustrated because you feel like I'm not going where I need to. I'm stagnating stillness, right? But look at the swan in this. Oh, what a beautiful illustration. So this is basically like the hanged man in reverse. So when we are in this, the phase of the hanged man, we're being asked to look within. We're being asked to be patient and we're being offered an opportunity to graduate with honors. I said it doesn't matter, but you're getting a chance. The stillness and the stagnation sometimes is just so that you can say, OK, I know why. I know I don't want this. I know I want that really get clear. The clarity is important. And to see what's available. These two cards are sisters. She's not looking at that cup right there. Um, she's just barely looking at the uh, reflection, but she's not necessarily seeing what you and I are, which is transformation, value, and beauty. And so that's really what this is saying with respect to wealth. If there's a plateau, if there's stillness, if there's been crickets, you've been sending out resumes or you just recently retired and you think, now what's next? It's saying there's something beautiful on the horizon. We saw it at the center here. The choice now is yours. You get to you get to turn the wheel in the direction that you want to go and it will come back. Things will move. There are periods in all of our lives where things don't always go the way you want. I can think back to when I first graduated from school and I was um, at the time I was in Northern California, but it was right around, um, there was a dot-com bubble that burst and 9-11 uh, happened and the economy was in a bad place. And so there was about six months where it was really difficult. And during that period, I just decided to move to Southern California and then change my career path entirely. And I went on the path of like entertainment, um, working in studios and, you know, working with art direction and production. And it ended up being one of the best periods of my life. And then, of course, I took another shift, you know, in around 2015 uh, where I decided to do this. But it's good when these big changes happen. And sometimes we need to go through a period where there is either stagnation or we change and we reflect upon something and think this isn't me anymore. She sees that she's the, the other way we can look at this is she sees that she's changing, but she isn't taking action. So this is saying action has to be a part of this right now. So the karma is you're not waiting. You're not waiting longer than you have to. Wait long enough to see the, the cycle and see the value and then take action. Now let's look at the cards here. If there's been a lack, there's something beautiful that's coming through. But it requires that inner child energy, which I think I've lost the, <laughs> the sun card, but it's here. You know that the baby was riding in on the horse. So it's also saying, I, I own this. I'm ready for this. I'm willing to do this. I invest in myself. I believe in myself. I can see this. Even if you can, especially if you can't, I can. And that may be the big challenge for those of you that are trying something new. Disbelief of others. I certainly experienced a little bit of that with a few, uh, mostly like people that were in management uh, when I was deciding to leave. They were like, are you sure you want to do this? Most of my friends knew that I was ready and my family supported me too. But I think everybody, if I was really to tune back into that, probably thought, I don't know what he's doing, but he seems, he seems confident. That's kind of in, that's really important. Not kind of. That's very important for the universe. They want the uh, high, your higher self and the powers that be. They want to see that you are invested, that you are vested in it. I should say, vested and invested, and that's going to help you out with that. It's time for some of you, by the way, to step away. So for those of you that are in a current job and you have a glass ceiling, that's the devil, and they are not accountable to promoting you and helping you and supporting and nurturing you. It's time. You know it's time. And your next job or next opportunity will come word of mouth or from friends. You're, you're very capable of getting something beyond this. So what I would say always with this is find your next thing first. Get your uh, safety net in, in order. Find the next job. And then it's not a question of you, know, you feeling like you don't have an option out there. The best way to counter the devil is to have another offer already on the table. So you're not tempted to stay so that you can actually show that that's their loss, right? So that's the important thing here. We're not getting a, with the devil, for those of you that want to leave, I wouldn't accept a counter. Um, if the new place gives you something from the get go and this place wouldn't for a while, it's, you don't want to deal with the devil energy. It's better to move on. The other karmic cycle for some of you is limitations in one's own mind. This won't happen. I can't do this. I'm not blank enough for this to happen. That needs to go away because the universe is saying you are enough. You can do this. 
someone does want to connect with you. See the value, release the limits, explore the path. That's the option here. Travel could be advantageous for some of you. A break. Some of you are burned out. This is a lot. So you might need a break. If time and resources afford that break, then go for it. And that's the main message here. Um, but this isn't a time for more stillness than necessary. The hanged man would be a period of time where you might take a few weeks or a few months, but eventually you need to push through that. So figure out who you are, where you want, how you got there, and then take action. Okay? All right. Let's look at what's coming through for love and relationships. So instinctual energy. Uh, we have the animal guardian here, but it says trust your instincts. So when I think of, uh, we're looking at the beautiful little deer here. So the deer sometimes would be afraid uh, to take action, but she also is connected with all the animals here. So when we think of animal instincts, when we think of the primal part of our brain, when we connect to the energy of the moon, it's basically saying, I can see, smell, or sniff something out long before it ever manifests in reality. And you are absolutely that. So the animal guardian and the high priestess are sisters in this particular spread. And this is saying when it comes to all relationships, you know what that is, you know who this is, you know why you don't want to do that. And that's the most important thing is to trust instincts and um, act upon those and, and decide like, what am I going to do about feeling like if I feel like this is a good thing or a bad thing, I need to trust in that. Let's break this down into three different areas. Current relationships, uh, those that are seeking out a new relationship or those that are single and happy. All right, the karma in old relationships. We'll go straight to these two cards. It is about honesty, transparency, and trust. That's the big opportunity. Some of this is past life. Some of this is happening now. It's a repeat. And the cycle ends, uh, I'll take my picture off here. The cycle ends right now. So what you want to do is just shine a light on this and say, this isn't what we talked about, or, you know, I see this and I don't agree with this, but I love you and I support you, but I need to see that same respect and love and support as well. And so you're going to stand your ground and, and sit in your power here. So for some of you, someone, your partner didn't come through the way they needed to. They may also be, it could, it doesn't have to be like about cheating. It could be about money. Uh, maybe they're not doing their fair share. They're not bringing what they need to in the relationship. Maybe they said that they were going to help you with something and they didn't. Accountability is the number one thing that I'm looking at. And then admitting uh, basically, yes, this is something that I need to do or, or the partner needs to say that they need to do it. Somehow being accountable to the change, that's what I'm picking up on with that. So for those of you that don't have that going on, the devil also represents things out of your control. So things that are out of your control here would be your extended family. The Six of Cups can be brothers and sisters-in-law or nieces and nephews. And there could be someone in the family that's acting a fool, <laughs> not acting the way that they need to. It's your job as partners to stand up for one another because you're the core unit now. Um, you know, when you were part of that family, that was the family. But once you decide to build a relationship with each other, if someone's hurting your partner or if you're getting hurt and your partner's not doing something about that, that creates friction. So you can't control the other people, but you can control your reaction and you can control how much access you give uh, to, of that person to your family. So this is really about boundaries and, uh, and deciding which battles to fight. Okay, so that's one thing. There could also be a situation like a health issue or addiction where the other person, either you can't control it or they need to ask you for help. And either way, the, the best you can do is show up and say, I want to help. Are you ready? And offer them that sort of like option on a platter. At the core, though, what I, what I do like is that there's um, a very deep connection. We've got both the sun and the six of cups. So you can get your way through. You can find your way through any problem. You already see the, the solution. The important thing, though, is that the other person doesn't walk out and that the other person is ready to receive. Ultimately, I think you can get through it, but there is a challenge for existing relationships. It's either extended family or the honesty and transparency with the two of you or a secret that needs to come out. Uh, but, but the other partner already knows, so just get it out. I think it's important to bring it to the light of day. So honesty, that's the karmic thing that you want to reset right now. Say what you feel, and if the other person can't be authentic, that's a bigger conversation to have because it's, it's what's tearing apart rather than building up the relationship. For those of you that are looking for something new, you have very similar energies of what we just looked at for those in existing relationships. But the main thing here 
is accountability. This kind of, I forgot to mention this with health, but this, this can be sort of self-deception where you know you need to do something, but if you kind of, if you, if you say, I'm going to do this, but you know that that's not going to happen, don't. So if you think you're ready for a relationship, but on in your heart and soul, you know, like, you know what, I really want to focus on work, school, or personal development, or I really don't have the time and energy to invest in this, get that balanced first. And this is also saying work life or health balance is more important than stepping right into this. I do see someone coming through, and again, it could be a beautiful Capricorn, um, but they're, we're still going to read the devil as a limit. And this could be that you're not completely ready. They're not completely ready. You're not unattached. They're not unattached. So make sure that that is there. And this is also saying the law of detachment will work in your favor. So when you realize that you are, as we said at the center, source, you are more than enough. You are lovable and you are going to be fine in this situation. You are not repeating cycles. You can manifest all of this and you have self-worth. Then you're going to pull in the best version of that, which would be the lovers, not the devil. So have a sense of detachment. I don't need it right now. I don't even need it tomorrow. I know it's happening. And if it doesn't happen, I still have an amazing path in front of me. The detachment will help pull it in even faster because then the universe is going to say, wait a second, I got something for you. You seem like you're, you're, you're open to it. So um, have that healthy amount of detachment with openness. And that's kind of how you manifest. So I do see love and um, abundance coming through for you but you need to get your life sorted here. And there, there might be something that you've just been overlooking or not putting the energy into, and that's really what's calling to you right here and right now, okay? And um, with the animal, well, well, we'll look in a second here. We're gonna now look at those of you that are single and happy. Single and happy, I see great development when it comes to school, work, and money. I think some of you um, also need to kind of focus on stepping back from all the commitments and really focusing on your core family or what brings you joy. And we do have animals coming through a couple of times here. Some of you might be deciding to do something with children or animals, very similar innocent energy. And, uh, and that's a beautiful sort of thing here. This is also about intuitive development, both of these cards. So some of you might be prioritizing that intuitive development and saying, you know what, I wanna learn more, I wanna focus more on meditation, on yoga, on mind, body, spirit, etc. All of these things are welcomed with the cards. Let's move to your destiny card next. All right, what a beautiful card that comes through for this. We have Gaia, Earth Connection. And if you read it closely, it says, be mindful of the planet, come back to Earth, stay grounded. So we can take this on a few different levels. First of all, it's about making it a better place. So Earth also just being like the environment around you. And some of you have looked karmically at stuff and thought, I'm tired of people saying they're going to do something and not. I'm tired of people getting away with things. I'm tired of this sort of cycle of not being allowed to be who I am because I don't fit into this mold. So you're going to change the world so that you and future generations can benefit. This can be changes in laws and policies and opinions. This can be leading by example so that we have good, good examples of divine uh, feminine and masculine leadership. And it can also be about improving the, the literal planet as well. So environmentalism and making sure that we're leaving a sustainable space here. <clears throat> Excuse me, here's the interesting thing. If more people plugged into the understanding that our souls not only can, but do reincarnate, we are creating a mess for ourselves in the future. And even if you tell yourself you're only, this is your last incarnation, you don't know that. Um, we keep coming back to this place for a reason. We have a lot to learn and there, there's, this is a beautiful place with free will and a lot of growth opportunities. So. Let's try to leave this nice in a nice way, because if not, then we're going to be cleaning up the mess that we made. So it's not just our children and grandchildren. It's not just the, the, our current lives. It's our, uh, our future lifetimes that are going to benefit from this. So there's actually not just an altruistic, but also just a good beneficial piece to this as well, which is you'll thank yourself in the future. Um, so this is grounding your dreams in reality, saying, I want to do this. This is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take action on it. This is creating a better place for yourself and clearing your environment, making it a better world for your children, grandchildren, and yourself and your future incarnations. Maybe in the past you were focused too much on self and ego. In this lifetime, it's going to be a combination of inner growth, but also um, looking at what you're leaving behind. It's not just legacy of how people remind, uh, remember you. It's like, is the world better for your involvement? That's the true 
connection to legacy. Our names, our faces, and you know maybe who we were it fades from history. But if we made it a better place, we were here. We made a difference. And on a soul level, that's all that matters in the Akashic Records and in your soul. So think of the book of your life and the book of your soul um, and what chapter this is right now. And is this, do you feel like you've learned, have you left people, environments, and the planet as a whole better for the experience? And if not, then you make changes. And if so, keep on that path. And if there's something you're still dreaming of doing, now is the time to take action on that and think bigger. This is ultimately also what the world card. Gaia is Earth and Earth is the world. Um, so this is saying that you have a chance to broadcast, share, and connect with a larger audience. And that's actually your big soul calling, um, your soul path calling to you rather. And that's why we have this connection here to source energy with the sun. So um, I love what I'm seeing here and it feels like you're in a really good path overall. Now let's take a look at the big idea. And the big idea is a chance for us to look at one extra card that's gonna help with this karmic question. Then I'm gonna pull um, some reader's choice questions here. Now, because this is special, I'm actually gonna do triplicate. I'm gonna do past, present, future, and whatever it is that you wanna do, let, let's really focus this more on where you wanna go next. So I'm gonna ask guides uh, and powers that be, what can the collective do to change karma and open opportunities? All right, let's take a look at the cards. I'll give it another shuffle. There we go. All right. Past, present, <laughs> future. Very interesting. And we definitely got um, all of the cards that have kind of come up in either channeled messages or even that were alluded to here, like with the reflection. All right. So the past energy. Um, we have the hanged man reversed, and I told you it was very close to the stillness card because she's being asked to look at something. Once she looks at it, once she sees it, then everything comes into focus. And what she sees is a blessing in disguise, a delay that is a blessing, um, something that she thought that had passed that is now obtainable. This is also a card of empowerment. So basically, in the hanged man, it comes through so that you can gain knowledge. A delay is a blessing. So what can you learn from this experience? What can you do next? How can you empower yourself? Nothing was a waste of time. Everything was for a reason. And if you rushed through anything, now is the time to go back and finish what you've started, okay? Present energies in the big idea, it's death and rebirth. And what is the destroyer but death and rebirth? So I, where there's an end, there's a beginning. And that's ultimately what this is saying. You, you're being opened up to something new. Look at how very similar. These are obviously very different decks, but look at how similar the illustration is. We see at least one star there. We see two stars here. We see something brilliant and beautiful calling you in. And there's inertia and speed with that. Look at how fast it will start to happen when you surrender to the call. And it's uh, the other star was right here because of this. So we see the star there, and then we see another star here. So don't worry about people... Uh, you finding someone or something, when you're on your path, you'll call it in. You become that central glue, that attractive magnet that's going to make this happen. What is in the future? No more pain. This is the best Ten of Swords um, almost in any particular deck. So I talked about the, the you know, the dandelion and we had Dentalion and I, I talked about the lion's teeth, which could mean that something said or something done could be held in your energy, your body or your karma. And you're now saying, I've experienced everything that I need to. I'm now walking into the new day. I'm not going to let naysayers, old failures, setbacks, or opinions hold me back. I'm choosing to go a different path now. So you're choosing a path of, of uh, independence and change. And you're walking away from this feeling of failure or fear or uh, also holding on to any doubts or any sort of uh, regret. No regrets. No more time for regret anymore. It's time to take action. All right, so with that being said, and that's a nice segue, I'll pull one additional card here in this part of the reading, and that's gonna be the reader's choice. And my reader's choice is for this, I really wanna help you through how to, um, how to bring this next connection. So we see that there's no more pain, we see that there's change. Let's go ahead and, and take a look now and see what is the big opportunity when it comes to 
opening up that new tomorrow, that better experience. I'm going to do two reader's choice, actually, because I want to look at the devil, too. But we're going to look first at, I'll pull them both at once here. The first question is, how can we really engage with the portal that is death and rebirth? And we've got the Ace of Wands. And the second one is, just in case this gatekeeper comes through again, what do you do? And we have the King of Swords. Okay, perfect. All right, so if we look at the first question here with the Ace of Wands, so how do you engage with change and transformation? Feed, fan the flames of your, um, your inspiration, your passion, your desire. This Ace of Wands is saying, when you feel that vitality that's connected to purpose, like the world is your oyster, amazing things start to happen. So I want you to give yourself permission I encourage you to give yourself permission to really feed that dream. It's not, it's not something that can kind of just sit in the back burner. So whatever it is that you've been waiting for permission to explore, whether it's healing or education or something else, this is your time, this is your place, and you need to be head strong. So Ace of Wands in reverse is saying, I know myself enough that I'm going to close off the the, the static. Normally, I would give a warning with ace or page or any of the court cards reversed. But in this particular case, I think it's important to stay strong and stay connected to the original vision and version of who you want to be, whatever it is that you want to do. And now, how can you counter the energy of the devil? Really be clear, clarity, because ambiguity is another tool of the devil. <laughs> so when you are clear, and how can the king of swords be clear? By saying, no, that doesn't work. Or we said we were going to do this, or this is a lawyer card too. Look at the agreement. Actually, you're wrong on this, and this is what we, you know. So basically holding people accountable. Because this isn't the strongest devil that could have appeared. There's something that was wrong in the contract. Like, this person's trying to get away with it, but they can't, uh, or they shouldn't. You're either going to stand up, or you have a contractual proof of this, or you're just not going to let this happen again. Also, this King of Swords has a lot of connections. We see all the flying... Uh, energies around him, the dragonfly, the bat, the owl, the falcon, all of that, also connected to the animal guardian here. So I see multiple channels and multiple people that can come to aid here. So you're not alone. And this is why also the devil is kind of afraid of you going into this unconditional. This is opportunity. The devil wants to hold you back from that. So the way to kind of overcome that is just lean into your community. Then if someone threatens, well, if you do this, you won't have me. You've got this bigger family, chosen family, chosen network that's going to be there to support you. So if an actual family or loved member, uh, family member or loved one rather, um, doesn't want to be there with you uh, through your next phase of the journey, that's their loss. Okay. Ultimately, though, with this, your, your words are actually quite powerful. So you have the ability to write, publish, speak, or argue your way um, out of this situation. The gatekeeper is going to dissipate. OK, and ultimately, the devil's more intimidating than it is powerful. Uh, you know, it is powerful as an energy, but we give power to it through all the things that I talked about. Fear, anxiety, uh, all of those sort of lower frequency energies and intimidation, etc. So when you unplug from that, it deflates and it focuses on someone else. OK, so there you go. That was a really powerful reading. We have a couple of pieces that are left, so don't go away just yet. Uh, there are uh, basically three things that we're going to do to wrap this up. We're going to meditate together, listen to a sound bath, and then I'm going to answer your final question. The final question is anything that I didn't have a chance to cover or something that came up personally in your life that you don't want to put out in chat and you just want to know about. So while we're meditating, meditate on that question, and then I'll pull one last card at the end. Before we do that, a reminder, like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you can. I, I appreciate it. You can also follow me on social media. Thank you in advance to anybody that's already become a member, has been a longtime subscriber, or has given back with Super Sticker or Super Chats. Um, I will say thank you as well to anybody that's doing it now, uh, and, and so will Dakota. So thank you in advance for that. And um, now let's get into the meditation. So for today, let's take a look at the cards really quick, and we'll figure out uh, I really love whenever this, um, whenever the death card comes through, this is one of the most beautiful ones that you could ask for. So I think I want to focus on the portal that we see here uh, between what was and what can be. I also really loved the sort of connection between these two. 
So we're going to go into your inner star energy, which is also part of the sun. So we're going to help you ignite your power because that was also part of the way to overcome some of this, some of the challenges because um, we have this inner flame. So we're going to help your star ignite and then we're going to answer the final question. All right, close your eyes, take a nice deep breath and let go of anything that you're holding on to in your mind, body or spirit. Perfect. I want you to imagine yourself at the dawn of creation and see things in this sort of dusty, unorganized mess that things are at the dawn of creation. We can maybe just say the beginning of this, universe, uh, this, this galaxy instead um, so that it's not so far back in time. So just imagine what the Milky Way looked like when it was starting to form. Dust everywhere, fiery orbs in certain places. I want you to find your space and imagine that you're capable right here, right now of creating something new, something exciting, and let this be symbolic of your life. This is your sandbox, if you will. So see all of this energy of potential starting to gather and it's, it's beautiful and it's dusty and it's messy. And if you look at like certain nebulae up in, in space, you can see purple and indigo and violet and all these different energies um, starting to take shape and take form. See yourself as a conductor at the center of this beautiful mess. <laughs> and I want you to imagine that as you start to connect with the third eye, you can even imagine that you're conducting or you're using your hands to paint you can create a shape or a form or a constellation of what it is that you want in your life. Is it love? Is it health? Is it success? Is it independence? Is it strength? Is it all of these things? Whatever it is, I want you to imagine that now you're starting to uh, use your hands to mix this up uh, and create circles and cycles and patterns. And this is going to be a new pattern that you're going to em embark upon, not just over the next seven days, but maybe the next six to eight months of your life and see things starting to be beautiful. You're at the center. And as you start to feel these affirmative words, you're going to see energy in your heart ignite. So think to yourself, I am powerful. I am capable. I am lovable. And I am ready. Now just say, I am. And when you say the final, I am, light is everywhere. You see this beautiful, it's kind of like a supernova, but it's just the birth. You, you're, you're, you go from protostar to star. Now you just have this brilliant energy and you can be whatever color star you want to, whether it's purple or yellow or blue or pure white energy, whatever it is that you want to see. Just imagine that this light is now all around you and you can see all of the planets, all of the satellites, all of the beautiful comets and things forming around you. These are representing new people, new opportunities, new things in your horizon. Create your own energy and your own sort of circle of light and life around you. Continue to do that and breathe as I play the singing bowl. And then we'll come right back and take a look at your final question. One last deep breath. Open your eyes. 
see that beautiful vision in your mind, in your heart. Let's seal the energy and the intention in place. With the first hand you say I, the second hand you say I am, and really see yourself as that creator, that co-creator in your life, bringing this into fruition. You are the conductor, you are the creator, you are capable, you are. All right, let's look at your final card, folks. I want you to focus on whatever question it is that you have for me that we haven't had a chance to answer just yet. Let's pull the camera down and shuffle the cards and see what spirit has to say. All right, we have a wonderful card here in the form of the Eight of Pentacles. Uh, as a yes, no, the Eight of Pentacles is an affirmative. It's yes. The Eight of Pentacles indicates that the work that you're doing is paying off. You may not see all of the immediate return on your investment, but it will come through. This is definitely a return on investment card, but you can see the phases of the moon. So it's saying, give it a month or two, give it a week or two, be patient and pay attention to the small stuff. Do sweat the small stuff. Look at the details. Have fun. Geek out on all of that stuff because people are going to be paying attention to the details. So the more you pay attention, the more you take it seriously, the better the outcome and the smoother the sailing in the future. It could be like two months here because we can take the eight of pentacles and it can be like eight weeks. It could also be eight days for those of you that are already pretty far through this. Um, but no matter how you slice it, the eight of pentacles is a great card. It also is an encouragement for um, apprenticeship, learning and knowledge expansion. Anything that gets your mind thinking and gets you excited and gets you intrigued is good. It is a card of discernment, which came through. Um, so you can also discern the small stuff and say, hey, wait a second. What about this or what about this? Look at the small details and uh, you have a really good chance of getting whatever it is that you want, basically with the Eight of Pentacles. Um, it's a well-researched, well-read, well-earned energy. So overall, uh, I feel really good about the question that you asked. There is also a component to it, which could be make sure you do your homework, make sure you do your research, make sure you read up. So if you're going to buy a house or make a major move, this is saying figure out how other people have done it successfully and what you can do to hopefully emulate or learn from their lessons. OK, that, my friends, is everything for today. And again, karmically, I feel like the main thing here that you're overcoming is limits. Limits in thoughts, limits in people around you that are afraid of you sort of breaking free and doing what you want to do. And the good news here is that you have the vision to make this happen. And you also seem to have a really great support around you that you're calling in. So this uh, it looks like you're in a very good place karmically and you're going to work through this cycle. And don't freak out or get worried if there's one final gatekeeper or test. All you have to do is shine brighter in that moment and be very firm and clear. This is what I want. Sorry, that's not appealing or that's not something that I'm going to uh, fall for again, right? Okay. Thank you again to everybody that was here today. I appreciate all of you. Please, if you haven't done so already, give me a like and subscribe. Put a comment on replay. That helps. Share this as well. Let some other people know about this. I'd love to have the channel grow and I can only do that with your help. Follow me on social media for reminders. It would be nice to have you there as well. And thank you for everybody who gave back today. Uh, you again make this all worthwhile and possible. Uh, I wish you all the best and please join me tomorrow. I'll be live on Halloween. We'll be doing a very special forecast that taps into the energy of the departed because the veil is thin. So we're going to get messages from those who have passed and I'll probably shake up the format a bit. And we'll also be looking at um, what what we can do in this new period because we're very much in in connection to our higher self and with that thin veil things are malleable so we're going to be looking at potential for change and the energy of death and rebirth and messages from the beyond okay so always one of my favorite uh readings of the year because halloween is fun and again it's really cool to be on that veil and on that very thin connection between what was and what can be. So join me tomorrow if you can. All right. In the meantime, lots of love and light to all of you. Take care of yourselves. A reminder that my live schedule is I'm, I'm, uh, I put videos out every Monday, Thursday, Friday. I'm here every weekend with the seven day forecast. I also pepper in special videos like tomorrow's. All right. Thank you so much and take care of yourselves. Bye bye.